One of the Con Toolbox's best features is its graphical user interface. Virtually everything you need to do can be done from the GUI, and Con's layout is straightforward and easy to use, especially for newcomers. The first step of any Con analysis is to create a new project. Clicking on the New button will prompt you to enter a new project name. Let's call it Arithmetic. As you make changes to the project during pre-processing and certain analyses, you can overwrite the project file at any time by hovering your cursor over the project menu and selecting Save. You also can close the con GUI if you need to, reopen it at a later time, and load your project by clicking the Open button and selecting the project file that you created. As you use the con toolbox more, you will encounter errors that are specific to your analysis. The Help menu at the top of the window contains links to the CON manual and other web resources. The Search Help option opens a search menu to filter forum posts by topic. For example, if you want to see every post that mentioned global signal regression, you can just enter it into the filter field and press Enter. In order to make the GUI easier to read, some users may want to change its appearance. Hover your mouse over the Tools menu and select GUI Options. This will open a window that allows you to do things like increase the font size or change the color scheme. For example, we could change the background from black to red. This looks hideous, so I'm going to change it back, but you get the point. You will notice that along the top of the con GUI, there are four tabs. The Setup tab is where the user enters the scanning parameters for the study, such as the number of runs and the TR. There are also buttons for loading the structural and functional images. In this experiment, there was one resting state scan and one anatomical scan per subject. Since we are beginning by analyzing just one subject, we enter 1 for the number of subjects, and also the number 1 for the number of sessions or runs field. From the JSON file on the OpenNeuro data download page, we learned that the repetition time, in other words the TR, was 3.56 seconds. The acquisition type menu provides two choices, continuous and sparse. Most experiments will use the continuous acquisition. Sparse acquisition is used for event-related designs and omits convolving the HRF with the onset of each trial. For now, leave it as the default of continuous. We now move down the left side of the GUI to the Structure tab. Click on it and then use the menu on the right-hand side of the GUI to select the file sub one anat sub one t one w a pop-up window will say that one file has been assigned to one subject. Click OK, and the structural image will be loaded in the center window. The slider to the right of the image can be used to flip through different slices, and the plus button at the top of the slider will change the viewing montage between axial, coronal, and sagittal slices. Clicking directly on the slices, will open up another display window that allows you to look at the slices in combinations of planes by clicking multiple checkboxes. The Functional tab is similar to the Structural tab. In this case, on the right hand side of the GUI, you can use the navigator to select the file sub01 func sub01 task rest bold.nii, and it will load the image's slices into the center window. The first volume in the time series is displayed on the left, and the last volume in the time series is displayed on the right. If there was any major movement or artifacts between the beginning and the end of the time series, it would show up in this side-by-side -side comparison. If there was a little or no motion, on the other hand, the two images should look virtually identical. 
As with the structural tab, you can switch between viewing planes and flip between different slices of the functional data. There is a difference, however. Instead of opening up a new viewing window, clicking on the slices themselves will open up a time series plot extracted from the voxel that you click on. Since these data haven't been pre-processed yet, you may notice trends in the direction of the time series, either upwards or downwards. These represent scanner drift artifacts, which we will later correct during pre-processing. Another useful check to do at this stage is to click on the Functional Tools menu in the bottom left corner of the Functional Data window and select Slice Viewer with Anatomical Overlay. QA underscore reg. This displays the functional data and anatomical image simultaneously and traces out the major sulcal and gyral curves in yellow. Check to make sure that the boundaries of the gyri and sulci of the functional data roughly match up with those of the anatomical image. Selecting both the coronal and axial planes is a good way to check that the ventricles and other internal structures are aligned. If you like, you can do the same QA check with the SPM check reg button by clicking the functional tools menu and selecting display functional anatomical co-registration SPM. This will open the check reg window, similar to what you used in the SPM tutorial. There are many other options in the functional tools menu. As an exercise, take some time to look at each of them and think about what they do. You may notice that there are other options in the GUI, such as ROIs, conditions, and covariates. We will leave those for now, coming back to them after we have pre-processed our data, which we turn to in the next chapter.